In this video, I'm going to show you how to code your newer BMW and we'll specifically highlight two things. How to get the most out of the features that are already in the car but not necessarily enabled where you live and how to get some of the annoying warning messages out. To do this job, you will need two things, software and hardware. Software is the app on your phone. In my case, I'm using Beamer Code, the most amazing uh, software for this type of work. And in terms of hardware, I'm using this uh, VPeak dongle, it's super cheap. You can uh, pick it up on Amazon. I'm going to link it down in the description uh, for you. There are many out there. I've been using this for years and it works absolutely amazing. The way it works is you hook it up to your car's uh, OBD port, then you sync it with your phone and then you can start coding. And since we are using a phone to code the car, you need to put it in a do not disturb mode so the coding doesn't get interrupted mid-cycle. Now we're ready to get started. Put the car in accessory mode, press the button. See, I'm getting a warning message. These are the type of warning messages that we'll be able to delete. Now we navigate to our Beamer Code app, hit connect. If you do it for the first time, it'll ask you to select your Bluetooth adapter. In my case, I'm using my VPeak Bluetooth one. Hit connect, select the car. In my case, BMW M5. It might take a couple of seconds for everything to load. Once everything loads, you are presented with this slew of options. Let's try head unit first. And once you get in here, you see you have a couple of these different options. Uh, for example, you can change the start animation from default to BMW standard to even Alpina ones, or even make it look like a Rolls Royce. In my case, I will keep it uh, as is. But again, you have all these uh, different uh, features. Uh, you. There's a tire widget. I don't know what that is, but we're going to enable it. Uh, display tire pressure and temperature in the instrument cluster. Hmm, I thought I had it, but maybe I didn't. So I'm going to be enabling it. Uh, then at the very, very bottom, warning at startup. Remember that message I told you about earlier? Warning at startup, we're going to select not active. It says disable the warning that is displayed when the iDrive system is started. Use a backup to revert this code once it has been applied. Okay, uh, so that that. Uh, camera warning. Camera warning, we're going to be, uh, disable the warning that is displayed when using one of the cameras. We're going to select not active. Night vision warning. We don't have any night vision, but it says disable the warning that is displayed when using the night vision camera. I don't have uh, night vision in this car, so we're going to uh, uh, enable that or not touch it. And uh, now that what I've selected everything that I wanted to select, let me hit code. A message will pop up, read it, and if everything matches, start coding. It's going to take some time to write the coding data. Once the coding finishes, the screen will restart and everything worked well. We should not see a warning pop-up signal. Let's see. Yay! <laughs> All right. So now let's go back to control units. Let me show you something else. By the way, this is so cool. Now in my cluster, I can see among all the other features, I can see PSI and temperature of my tires, a function that was not available before I coded it. I wonder if it's not available in the uh, in US, but maybe in Europe is, but just like that, I was able to, uh, to enable it. And now we're gonna go to the tailgate function module because there's something in here that really, really bugged me. Uh, you have uh, all these different menus. For example, you can uh, just enable the button to be pressed down for open and pressed down for close if, if you wanna change that. But if you go to tailgate function remote control, so sometimes I wanna open my trunk with the remote control, but I also wanna close it. Guess what? it's disabled. So when you click on that menu, tailgate function remote control. Currently it's set to open. Guess what? I can set it to open and close. Bam. That is amazing. And that was really the only option out of the tailgate function module that I wanted to code. So let me hit code. Start coding. Let it do its thing. Coding successful. We're gonna test it uh, at the end of this video. But you get the idea. These are all the functions you can uh, you can do with this, this app. But there's another app that I wanna show you which does similar things, but a little more. This application is called Beamer Link. And again, connects to your OBD. You don't even have to unplug it. Once it connects, you are presented with this uh, pretty nice menu. What I used here are two things. When I got the exhaust, uh, obviously the, the car got louder on the outside, but also on the inside, I had active sound. So I felt like they were fighting against each other. So what I did was 
I disabled active sound. So ASD is the active sound. See, I currently have it set to off. I want to keep it as off, as off because that way I don't have any sound uh, of fake exhaust sound uh, playing from the speakers. If, if if you want to keep it on, keep it on. Uh, but I but I like to um, keep it up. Also, if you want to register your battery, you can also register your new new battery using this app. You can also scan it for codes, which is what I did when I uh, when I thought I had a check engine light. You can also change your exhaust flap to be open, closed, or in auto mode. I like to keep it in auto mode because I have a button here uh, that uh, that adjusts it. If you don't, uh, you could uh, you could set it and have your car be quiet or louder as much as you want to. Also, if you are like me and you do a lot of DIYs, uh, you don't go into the dealer, in which case you can reset all these different things using this app. So engine oil, you can reset front brake, uh, rear brake, brake fluid, and general vehicle check. So I'm going to be using this when I do service my, uh, my car. And then last but not least, if it's your thing, if let's say you, you're doing a lot of performance logging and whatnot. If you go to sensor values, you can create a log. So if you hit edit, add, and you have all these things that you can add as a dashboard that's actively monitored. For example, coolant temperature. You add it uh, as a, you add coolant temperature, and then it will always display the coolant temperature of your car as you're driving. Let's say you have your phone here, you can, you can do that. You can do oil temperature, you can do your, your boost pressure, all kinds of parameters, you can have it uh, displayed live. You can have your speed, your RPM, anything that's, uh, that you can think of, this app pretty much, uh, pretty much has it. But I hope I gave you uh, at least a taste of what you can do uh, by coding your BMW and by using the, uh, the two apps. As I mentioned earlier, the first thing that I did when I did the exhaust, I uh, disabled active sound and it was very, very easy with uh, Beamer Link. I wanted to wait until I made this video to disable some of the warning messages and also enable some of the features that this car has but are not necessarily enabled. How cool it is that I have now tire pressure and temperature in my cluster. I never had it before. So if uh, you're interested in doing this, I linked the dongle down in the description of this video. I'm also going to write down for you uh, the two apps that I used. Uh, you do have to pay a one-time activation fee but in my mind, it's absolutely worth it because you can do so many things with it. You can enable features, you can disable features, but also if you work on your car, you can reset all the service things. You can check uh, if you have a check engine light, you can reset your check engine light. Amazing thing to have if you have a BMW. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. As always, I'll address every single one of them. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. But before we end, let's see if the coding worked in the trunk. Just so you know that it's live and you believe me, check this out. This is it. Pressing. And now pressing the button again. Okay, so you do have to long press it to close. I didn't know that. So again, let's try this again. Open. And now long press it to close. <laughs> Love it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.